Hey guys, I want to show you a new set of plugins I wrote for 3ds Max for creating 3D dimensions. So if you go to your crate panel and go under the spine section and click on Joker Martini, you'll see three new plugins. We will start with the Angular Dimension, which is probably one you guys have seen before. So in this case, we'll click and create it. And then we'll go ahead and select the anchor point here and snap align it to this guy. Uh, for simplicity, I'll turn off the shape rendering and viewport just so you can, it's easier to see. And we'll go ahead and snap this guy to the end point and we'll grab our starting point and snap this. And you'll see as you move it around, the values do update in real time down here. So you can kind of see what angle you got going on, which is awesome. And then if you click the spline shape itself, you do have options to control the visuals of it. So we have a bunch of options here. Um, aside from the basic spline shape ones, you have auto length, which means these lines are automatically going to extend to match the distance at which these point helpers are located. Let me select that back. You also have absolute length. If you want to specify a specific length yourself, you can do that. They will always point towards these point helpers, but at this specific length. Uh, you can choose to turn them on and off if you don't want them. We have overall radius for this angular line. And then we have a gap if you want to maybe adjust the arrow for whatever reason. And then we also have a reflex option if you want to do the inverted angle. Again, you can turn on and off this line as well. And now for this dimension line here, uh, you do have marker options. By default, arrow open is enabled, but you can mix and match any of these as you like. And then there's also a radius option to control the size of it. We'll go back to the arrow. And then you can adjust the unit display value. It's going to default to degrees, but you can also do radians if you like. It automatically converts it for you under the hood. You can freely move this text object around. It's just text plus. So you can customize it and add prefixes or suffixes, whatever you want inside of here. Um, it's just set up for you to automatically read the value and display it. So in this case, um, if you happen to delete the text and you want it back, you can select your spline shape and under tools, you will see we have create dimension text, which will create it for you and hook everything back up. So we'll go into our next one here, which is linear dimension, which is one you probably are used to seeing the most of. So we'll click out here and create that. So this one, again, we'll snap these two points to the end of our object. As you see, as I move this point, the dimension line automatically orients itself based on a perpendicular to these two points. If for any reason you want to control that, you can choose world axis and have it locked to a specific axis. And that allows you to have um, a little bit more limited control on the orientation. But in this case, perpendicular will work. So we'll go ahead and snap that back. Um, and then we will center up our dimension. And we'll rotate this to uh, orient it towards the camera. And we'll just move it in. So for this dimension in particular, we want the text to be displayed right uh, over the line centered. But the nice thing about the dimension, uh, linear dimension, is you can actually use the text gap feature to split the line so the text does not overlap or intersect it. And then if you want, uh, you can turn off those lines on the sides. Again, you can turn off the dimension line. Um, one of the nice features about the dimension lines, you can do the inside or outside. If you do the outside option, you can choose the length of the extension or these little like tick mark lines. In this case, we'll leave it on the inside. Uh, if you want these extension lines on the side to kind of shoot past a little bit, you can use the extend option here. So we'll do that, makes it look a little bit nicer and easier to read. Again, we have the same marker options to change if you want to, or you can um, turn them all off. Now, the nice thing about the linear dimension line is you can choose the unit you want it to be displayed in. Auto will use your current units in your scene. Otherwise, you can have it automatically convert it for you. Now, if you need a specific decimal uh, value that you want to control, like the number of decimal places, you would just click on a text plus object and control that there. Um, 
So the last feature we got here is the lead dimension. So we'll go ahead in the side view, we'll click that. This one's probably the simplest one out of all of them. Um, we'll go ahead and again snap this to here. We'll go into our 3D, view, 3D viewport. And you can adjust these as well. Um, they're simply linked to each other to make it easier to move them around. You can unlink these helpers to make them work independently if you want. And the text plus object, again, you can move that and place it however you want and it'll automatically kind of stay linked to this helper here. Now we'll select our spline. Uh, similar options as the other ones, but in this one you can actually turn off uh, the marker if you don't want it on and you might want to just extend the line if for any reason you need to do that. The arrow always stays at the intersection point of this first helper. So we'll reset that there. Uh, now with the value you can see it's always zero and that's because it's not being calculated by uh, the shape itself whereas these two dimension lines down here are. So to make this value have some sort of actual display, you will select your uh, lead dimension shape and put in a value. So in this case, we'll just assume this uh, cylinder cut in half is a radius of 20. And then again, you can use these values to override the conversion. So the last feature here that's worth showing is some of the tools. If we go ahead and duplicate this object, we'll hit copy. And let's just say, for example, you have a bunch of these lead dimensions in your file and you tweak the looks of it to have, let's say, a larger marker and you want it to be a circle and a cross. What you can do is under the tools section down here, you can say match styles and sizes and it'll find any lead dimension shape in your entire file and automatically match them to be the same. So in this case, you can see this shape now has the same as this one. If you select this one and adjust it, um, let's just do square and then hit match styles, you'll see it matches. So each of these three dimension plugins have these same tools, so you can use them to help set your file up. If you guys have any feature requests, feedback, feel free to let me know. Look forward to seeing you guys uh, check this plugin out. Thanks.